Today I'm going to talk about Razor, which is a framework for post-deployment software deploying. This is a joint work with Hong, Mansour, Simon, Tesu, and Winky. We're all from Georgia Tech. As we all know, software is getting crazily bigger. Take a Linux kernel as an example. For version 2.6, it has around 5 million lines of code, which gets to version 4.9. The code size reaches to 17.5 million lines of code. We have to ask, is all the code necessary? To answer this question, a previous study evaluated some normally used software, including Firefox and Chrome. Um, they, they evaluated the code coverage, and they show that software is usually bloated. For static code coverage, the average coverage is 73%, which means there is around 27% dead code. Since it gets worse in dynamic code coverage, only 21% code is actually executed for normal usage. In the, in the context of security, bloated code increases attack surface. Let's take Heartbleed as the first example. The vulnerability is in the TLS Heartbeat extension in the OpenSSL. And this is extension is not used by most users, but it's enabled in default. The second example is CVE 2014-0038. This vulnerability is in compact syst receive M message function, which handles the receive M message system call for X32 API. X32 API is an API that takes advantage of the 64-bit environment while using the 32-bit pointers for less overhead. However, no such problem exists in real world. And X32 API is enabled by default in all major distributions like Ubuntu. After realizing the problem caused by bloated code, researchers have proposed software bloating to remove unwanted code for a particular functionality. However, all existing software debloating systems have the limitations. First, they all require source code. But source code is not always accessible to users, and even if it's accessible, it's always challenging and time consuming to recompile the source code. For example, it takes hours to recompile a clone. Uh, second, to remove the code for particular functionalities, test cases are given, and they all assume that the test cases are complete. But this assumption mostly fails in real world, because even for experts, it's impossible to provide a complete test case for a particular functionality. So to solve these two limitations, we proposed Razor, which performs code reduction for deployed binaries without source code. And instead of assuming the test cases are complete, Razor uses heuristics to infer more related code for the given test case for a particular functionality. Let's see how Razor works. First, given a bloated binary and some test cases for a particular functionality, the tracer runs the binary on the test cases, and it collects the trace and decodes the trace to a CFG, which includes all the executed code. Based on this CFG, the path finder uses heuristic, heuristics to expand the CFG to infer more code that is, that is not executed, but is highly possible to share the same functionality with the test cases. In the end, the generator, based on the expanded CFG, does a bunch of works to rewrite the binary to generate a deploaded binary that only contains the executed code and the inferred code. Let's see the details. Razor uses multiple tracers including both software-based tracers and hardware-based tracer. For software-based tracers, such as DynamoRio and Ping, they provide complete trace, but at the same time, they also introduce significant overhead. On the other hand, hardware-based tracers, such as Intel PT, the overhead is small, but the trace is usually incomplete because of data loss problem. Another reason is that Programs on the different tracing environments may show divergent passes. For example, for DynamoRio, it would automa automatically expand the uh, binaries path to the absolute path, so it may trigger different uh, uh, executions compared with like Intel Pin. The collect trace contains three parts. The first part is ex all the executed basic blocks. We record the 
start address and end address of each basic block. And second part is for conditional branches. We record what branch is taken and what branch is not taken. The third part is for indirect calls and jumps. For each indirect call, we record that uh, we record each target and also how many times that target is invoked uh, for running the test cases. After we get the executed code for running the test cases, we need to infer more code because uh, the test cases are not complete. We need to find more codes that are related to the test cases. So we use four heuristics. In the left figure, the solid part is the executed code, and the dashed part is the, not, is the unexecuted code. The first heuristic, we call it zero code, which means on the inferred code path, we do not introduce extra code. We only enable it. For example, for the conditional jump in L1, only its fourth branch is taken. However, the target of the true branch is also reachable from L2. So after applying this heuristic, the edge between L1 and L3 is enabled. The second heuristic is zero call, which means on the, the inferred code path, we do not allow call instructions. So the inferred code, code can only be in the same function with some executed code. For example, for the code in uh, L4, it has no call instructions. So after applying zero call heuristic, we would include the code in L4. The third heuristic is zero library call heuristic, which means on the inferred code path, we allow call instructions, but if it calls some non-executed library functions, we do not allow that. For example, for the code in L6, it has a call instruction which calls LABS1, but this function is not a library function. So after applying this heuristic, we would include the code in L6. The last heuristic we call it zero functionality heuristic, which means on the inferred code path, we allow the call instructions to call library functions and even non-executed library functions. But only if the targets share, some, like, share the same functionality with some called library functions. For example, the call instruction in L8 calls SQLT. It's not executed at all, but in L9, a call instruction calls SQLTF, and this is executed. So, and since SQLT and SQLTF share the same functionality, so after applying this heuristic, we would include the code in L8. After we get all the executed code and we infer the more codes that is highly possible to share the similar functionality with the test case, uh, we, we need to generate a deployed version of the binary that contains those code. So first, we disassemble the binary based on the expanded CFG, and then we symbolize each basic block. Then we do some instrumentation. Because the rewriting changes the address, so the target of indirect calls, the address would be not valid at all. So we concretize targets of indirect calls and jumps. For each indirect call, we change it to a bunch of if else can comparison and, and a direct call instruction. And then we also fix the callback function pointers, and we also enforce allowed control flows, say for a conditional jump, what branch is allowed to take and what branch is not allowed to take. And for indirect calls, what targets are allowed to take. Even though we infer more code, still we cannot guarantee that all the code related to this particular functionality is all kept. So what if some missing code is triggered for different test cases? So we, we insert a fault handler. So when the missing code is triggered, it jumps to the fault handler, which just dumps the cost X and exits the execution. In the end, all we write compares the instrumented assembly code to an object file, and it copies the code section into the original binary, and in the end, it fixes the except handler's address in the GCC ex acceptable section. To evaluate Razor, first, we compare it with Chisel for code reduction. Chisel is also a deploying system 
uh, which use machine learning to deploy the programs with source code. We can see in general, for both basic block and instruction level, Chesel removes, most, uh, removes more code than Razor because it adopts a more aggressive approach. It even removes code that is triggered by the test cases. We will see later that this aggressive approach will cause some security problems. To validate the functionality of the deployed libraries, we run the deployed, library, uh, deployed binaries on the same test case for, uh, for, te for deploying the binaries. We can see for all the binaries deployed by Razor, after applying some heuristics, they can run the same test cases successfully without any crash or any long operations. However, for the binaries generated by, uh, by Chisel, uh, they fail on some of the test cases. For example, for BDF2. When we uh, run a deployed binary for compression or decompression, it will uh, it creates some unwanted files on the disk. And for gzip, it triggers an infinite loop problem uh, because the chisel removes a conditional check inside the loop. So once the execution goes into that loop, it never jumps out. To see how effective are our heuristics, we run the deployed binaries on the different test cases that share the same functionality. If we don't apply any heuristics, we can see that the deployed binaries fail on most of the test cases. However, after we apply more and more aggressive heuristics, the resulted binaries can run all the different test cases without any crash successfully. And for code reduction, even we apply the most aggressive heuristic, like uh, zero functionality heuristic, we can see it does not sacrifice too much code reduction benefit. To evaluate the security benefits of the deployed binaries, we first collect some CVEs. And we check if the original binary is, uh, is vulnerable for that CVE, we check whether the deployed binary removes the vulnerable code. And if the original binary is not vulnerable for that CVE, which means some security patches are applied for fixing the vulnerability, we check whether the deployed, the deployed binary removes the security patches. For these two CVEs, the original binaries are vulnerable. And the chisel can remove the vulnerable code because they are not triggered by the test case. So the binaries generated by Chisel are not vulnerable, but Razor cannot remove the vulnerable code because they are executed at, uh, for the test cases. However for, however, for these three CVEs, the original binaries are not vulnerable because some security patches are already applied for fixing that vulnerabilities. However, Chisel removes the security checks. So the binaries generated by Chisel are actually vulnerable. However, Razor does not remove them because the security, the security checks are executed for the test cases. For the runtime overhead, on average, Razor introduced 1.7 slowdown. The overhead comes from the instrumentation of indirect calls and jumps because we change it to a bunch of FLs and direct jumps. Uh, we can see for per bench benchmark, it has higher overhead like uh, six, 16% because per bench has some indirect calls that has a large number set of targets. So there are lots of like if else and the direct jump instrumentation, so the overhead is much higher. Actually, in our extended version, we use the translation table for indirect calls, so it can be optimized, actually. We also use Razor to deploy two real-world software. One is Firefox. We use Firefox to load top 50 Alexa websites. We randomly pick 25 websites for deploying and use the other 25 websites for testing. We also deploy Foxy Radar, which is not open source. We use it to open and scroll 55 different PDF files, and we randomly pick 50 files for deploying and use the other 40 files for testing. We can see after applying the zero library core heuristic, the deployed version of Firefox and Fox Radar can run all the 
different test cases successfully and at the same time it achieves pretty good code reduction. Furthermore, we also use unfold validation approach to apply the CLO library call heuristic on Firefox to see how effective our heuristics are for real world software. We split Alexa's top 50 websites into five groups. Each time we select two groups for debloating and use the other three groups for testing. We can see uh, the debloated version of Firefox can visit, can visit most of the websites successfully, besides two corner cases, one is WordPress.com and the other is Twitch.tv. Because these two websites, they trigger some very specific code paths that cannot be triggered by other uh, websites or our heuristic cannot cover them. One application for the bloating web browsers is per site browser isolation. We create minimal versions of web browsers for, for visiting particular websites like banking websites, online shopping websites, or social media websites. For example, we deployed Firefox for visiting three banking websites, Bank of America, Chase, and Wells Fargo. We can see we can generate a deployed version Firefox with applying zero core heuristic, and, and the code reduction is about 68%. And I compared this uh, deployed version with the uh, deployed version for visiting all the top 50 websites, we can remove more code, around 5%. So in summary, we, pro we propose Razor, which performs code reduction for deplo deployed binaries without any source code. And uh, instead of assuming the test cases are complete for particular functionality, we use heuristics to infer rela more related code, and uh, which has proved to be very effective. Yeah. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take a question now. We have a microphone, or two. Please. Y'all gotta make me do this. In the meantime, think and, uh, I actually do have a, a, a real question, not just a chair question. Um, so, you're, you're doing the, the per website like isolation, uh, but it yeah. seems, well, so one like WordPress is like 25% of the web, um, but the, the other thing like with, I don't know, Facebook or all these other websites, we're bringing like third party content. So whatever you may be visiting today, tomorrow I'm loading like these iframes that are completely unrelated. So how do you know you, that this is like good? Oh, we, we cannot like guarantee that because it like, totally depends on the features used by each specific website. So if the websites are similar uh, with the websites we are deploying for, then it's highly possible that it can like, work for that website. Yeah. Got it. Um, and, and would source help with any of this? Um, for, a particular, for particular users, like, they only fit it uh, like, uh, just some particular websites like Gmail or other like just banking websites, yeah, just for like part of users, yeah. But for if you fit it like different kinds of users, like like most like top, uh, one, uh, top like one thousand Alexa websites, then I don't think it like it brings benefits for that, yeah. All right, thanks. Ah. It sounds like if I do have code. Is this tool going to be helpful in suggesting helpful, uh, helpful target-rich areas of code that are kind of just could be called in like this process is nice if you don't have source and you don't deploy the binary iteratively. But if I am the person actually deploying this thing, might it help me detect uh, dead code and get rid of it and do a manual security review to make sure that even those like super rare events, if you have a large enough deployed code base, you might still hit those. Would, would this help? Yeah, I think it should, yeah. yeah. Uh, as, uh, with, with the code, uh, because, um, I think it totally depends on like, how, the, like, how complex are the, like, are the programs. Even if you have code, if, uh, if it's not well-defined, don't have well-defined APIs, then it's, I think 
it doesn't help. Yeah. So it's not necessarily optimized for explainability of why it's like mappings from this is what you're trying to do and this is what I called. Uh, for mapping, I think, I think the well-defined APIs or documents will help, not like um, random code.